Hello, welcome to our Facebook Live. I'm Paula Nowak and I'm joined by Steve Mize and we're gonna be talking about dock diving. Now it's something I'm totally a rookie at, so I'm gonna learn a lot with you guys, but I want this to be interactive. Don't just let me take all of the time asking my questions. And I know Steve and I, we could just talk forever and just ignore the rest of you. So I want you guys to make sure that you post comments and questions down below because we want to make sure you get the maximum out of this and I know after the broadcast we will both check in if you guys have any questions afterwards so Steve thank you so much for reaching out um, it is a huge honor that you even asked to spend the time with us because I know um, this is a busy season for duck diving and um, we go way back which is hilarious like you know I just seven or eight years where we were back then where we're, we're the same and different in so many ways, um, have grown a lot. And now, excitingly enough, you are the operations manager for North America Diving Dogs. That's awesome. And congratulations, because everybody says American and you said it right. Good job. I had to write it down. <laughs> <laughs> I wore it. There you go. <laughs> awesome. So I think first what we should start with is just getting to know you a little bit and how you got into dock diving and what you do today with it. Well, and, and my story truly is much like everybody else's. I had a dog that we would go, This you know, we'll talk about your backyard. I had a dog that I used to go to a park in Athens and play in a river. And he would run and jump off the river bank eight or 10 feet, but it was pretty cool. You know, I'd throw the stick, he'd go get it, he'd come back I, just all the time. And somebody said something about, oh, have you have you ever been in those competitions? And I'm like, what are you talking about? I've never right. heard of it. So that, and I was like, oh, okay. Well, a few weeks later, I was actually in Asheville, North Carolina, and I saw an event and I was like, man, this is amazing. And then they said something about, if you want to try it with your dog. And it was kind of funny because they were like, now most new dogs don't jump. And like the very first time Tanner jumped off the dock, he jumped like 16 feet. And they were like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. They're and like, you've been they, doing this a while. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, no, this was our first time, but it was awesome. The crowd cheering and my dog, you know. And so um, they said that I could compete in the next, you know, splash wave that they had. And I think we ended up, I think we got like a 15-8 or something, but it was just awesome. So when I got home, I started looking and I found a local club in my area and I reached out to him and Tanner was actually mine and an ex-girlfriend's dog. So when we split, he went with her. Oh, so man. I got another puppy um, and I got Willow, who's my chocolate lab that I still have to this day. She's 11, almost 11. Wow. And I started working with her. And at that time I competed with doc dogs and we had a blast and I did it for four or five years with them. Um, and then I started looking at other dog sports um, got into Frisbee, failed at some agility classes, started doing barn hunt. Um, Fast Cat hadn't come out yet, but we'd gone and done the cat, you know, right. the big lure one. course. Yeah, 300, that, 600 yards. Yep. Yeah, I, I realized that my lab can run fast, has no cornering ability, <laughs> so, which is why I love Fast Cat now. But anyway, so I kind of started missing dock diving. And then I heard about this new company, North America Diving Dogs. And I was like, I, right, you know, get away from some of the stuff and drama that had happened in the past. So I'm going to go start again. Um, well, during my time with dock dogs, I was an announcer. I traveled the country and I announced events, um, was lucky enough to be their announcer of the year one year. Um, and it was all, you know, great and wonderful. Well, I got started announcing some for North America diving dogs at their, at their first national championship. I'd never met the owner. I'd never been to an event and they hand me a microphone and say, go, I'm trying not to, I have to change the verbiage of things that I do. It's now a splash and not a wave. It's distance and not big air. And I'm doing this all live. So <laughs> it was a lot of fun though. And it was fun again. It was, it brought back that feeling of, man, this is awesome. And the people are loving it. And so the owner of the company, Debbie, you know, said to me, she said, Hey, you know, would you like to announce some more, maybe help run some events here in the South. And at the time I owned Athens Unleashed, my dog training company. So my schedule was mine. I thought, you know, it is, this is fun again. I've been, had a break for a year or two. Let me get back into this. So I started doing that. And then she offered me to run the Southeast stock. And it was going to be like five or six events a year. 
we ran 14 events the first year. And so the second year it was like 20 something. And I closed my dog training business because I was doing more with Nat. Right, you didn't have time for um, it. <laughs> and over the time, just her and I and our philosophies that this is supposed to be about you and your dog having fun. And it, we are a customer service industry. I, I tell people all the time, especially our facilities and our people that run events, do not forget you are having people pay you for something they can do for free. Don't forget that. Okay. They can go to the lake or the pond and say, Hey, Paula, meet me at the pond. I got a six pack of beer. We're going to go play with our dogs. And sometimes businesses get caught up in the business and forget that. So I'm always telling our people. So we had the same philosophy. And as the company grew, Debbie started giving me more and more responsibility. And unofficially, I was the operations manager for a year. And then it became official, official last summer. It just got to be where there was so much going on. You know, we had hit 10,000 registered dogs. We were putting on 160, excuse me, events a year between our facilities and our mobile docks. And it was just too much. So she said, you got to make a choice. You can either be operations manager and we'll find somebody else to run the Southeast dock or you run the Southeast dock, but I've got to have full-time help. So I'm not young. Setting up that dock and tearing it down was getting a little old. Um, I had gotten engaged and was getting married and decided, you know what? I want to, I want to stay home more and I'm going to be the operations manager. Well, then we added, we're up to like 70 facilities. I've been on the road 23 events this week. So that's kind of out the window or this month, 23 weekends this month, this year, I'll get it right. Um, <laughs> and it's just, it's just the growth. I mean, the people, you know, we're now pushing 16,000 registered dogs. We're, we're pushing 70 full-time facilities and seven mobile docks running, you know, 250 events a year. It, it's just crazy. And it's all because, you know, you build it, they will come. I mean, it's, I had somebody call me today asking for an event, a new event with a mobile doc. And we just approved a brand new facility in Merle's Inlet, South Carolina today. So, I mean, it's just, it's crazy. And it's just, we're having to keep up with the demand. So it's, yeah, it's dog driving is a huge deal. I had no idea. We just started offering some classes and thinking, Oh, you know, we'll just try it out. And, and now it's like, <laughs> We want more and we don't have we don't have the time or the space to do it, right? So, you know, being a novice at dock diving, you know, you're talking about facilities and mobile docks. Can you talk a little bit about what that means and how people can find events? So, number one, and I say this hands down, it's one of the things that I am most proud of our team doing. We have the best website and member portal of any dog sport. It's ridiculous. It's live. As soon as the scores are entered, your rankings and averages and titles update. Wow. It's amazing. That's awesome. So on our website there, you know, we've got, I think you and I talking about, you know, videos on how to get started, but basically there's two types of locations. The first one is the facility. This is any dog related business that has built their own dock and pool. And okay. they've gone through the application process to get, um, approved by NAD and now they're sanctioned to run NAD events at their facility okay. and they can hold four to five. Some of them hold six a year, depending on their season. It's NAD approved as we're the only organization approved by the AKC. It counts towards AKC titles and we can talk about all that later. Totally. But we got you. That's a facility. It's permanent. The good things about facilities is they're there season round. So you know, we're both in Georgia. So, you know, April to November is our season. You know, right. you can't really do much. But during their season, they can, you know, do classes, do training, do seminars. So they're there the whole time. They're really the backbone and the core of the sport. Um, the mobile docks are the fancy trailers that set up the pools um, I don't know if you've seen the one we do at Wolfstock and Swanee and Smyrna. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we do it there. You know, we pull in with this big 45 foot trailer, unload the pool, fill it with 20,000 gallons of water, set everything up, run the event for two, three days, break it all down, clean it, put it back on the dock, go to the next event. Um, and is that, is that a per 
person's or that is the organization's pool? So it's it's our pool, our trailer, our event, but the people that run it are independent contractors. So okay. I book the event and then I contact that crew and say, hey, I've got an event for you on July 22nd next year. Here's the details. And they go run it. Gotcha. Okay. And how many organizations are there in the U.S. to do dock diving? So there's there's pretty much four big ones. Okay. There's NAD, Dock Dogs, Ultimate Air Dogs, and Splash Dogs. And then you step down a little bit. There's Peer Pups, which is basically in the Wisconsin area. And okay. they're actually affiliated with us now. There's Extreme Air Dogs out west. Um there's a couple other, you know, real like smaller, small, like regional, yeah. Regional. Um, but you know, we're the newest. You know, we're going into our sixth year. Doc Dogs is in their twentieth year. But uh, you can't. Uh, you know, we kind of joke. I I don't have access to their numbers, but I know we have fifteen thousand dogs registered. We don't mind saying that. I know we put on more events than anybody, so we kind of say we're the large, the new kid, but the biggest. I don't have straight facts to back that, but I can look at I can look at website at events and see ours are much bigger. Right. And you said that that this organization is associated with AKC. So talk a little bit about that. So NAD is independently owned and operated. We have one owner. She runs the company. I work for her. Everybody else is independent contractors. Um, are your guidelines? For, we'll come back to that one. Yeah, Sorry. we'll come back to questions. <laughs> um, so the AKC truthfully, the AKC looked at other organizations seven or eight years ago because they have a certain way that you have to do things. And if another organization can't get in line, you know, it doesn't work. So my owner, Debbie, was trying to actually get the AKC to recognize another organization and it just didn't line up. It didn't work out. And they told her, well, we've tried. We'd love to do dock diving, but unless there's just going to be a new company that starts up meant to be for us, we don't see how we can do it. And, and I'm going to back up. Barn Hunt had started growing at this time. And Barn Hunt, as far as I know, was the first title recognized sport by the AKC, which means there's the AKC and there's Barn Hunt and you follow Barn Hunt's rules. But when you get a Barn Hunt title, the AKC will recognize it. Okay. It totally makes sense. So, so it basically got presented to her that, hey, if you do this, you know, you can be title recognized. So any title you get with NAD, you pay the AKC, of course, and they'll put those initials on the suffix of your dog's name and you can get AKC titles for your dogs that way. Um, so and that's really important to people. You know, they, they want that. I had no idea. I yeah, had no is. idea yeah. how big <laughs> titles were until I started working. And, you know, we have people that'll say, oh, people with y'all are just title chasers. I, I always say it's a goal. You might have a goal this season for your dog to jump 10 feet. Somebody else might have a goal to go win the national championship in their division. Mm -hmm. I might have a goal to earn my, you know, doc senior excellent title. Who cares? It's you and your dog have a goal and go reach that goal. And I'm not going to put you down because you're only jumping 10 feet. I'm not going to tell the other guy, oh, why do you want to, what makes you think you can win a national championship? So, you right. know, who cares if I'm trying, I, I don't care what you're doing. You're competing it really you're against doing. yourself, right? Yeah. So, and well, at nationals, there's a national championship. So. <laughs> All right. Let's jump into some of these questions. So um, I'll flash them up here on the screen. Thank you guys for making it interactive. I'm going to take a pause from our, you know, ramblings here. So here's our question about guidelines. Yes. So I guess it's Jeanette. Um, if you go to the North America Diving Dogs webpage and you scroll to the very bottom of the page, you're going to see something that says NAD facility requirements. It'll tell you all the requirements and the applications on there. Okay. So cool. you can just go there and read it and apply. All right. Next <laughs> up, we have uh, Rachel asking about, you know, would you host an event um, at a man-made lake? Actually, no, we don't. And the reason being is um, we've really tried to standardize what we do. Um, we used to have ponds and actually we're down to only one pond and they actually may be putting in a pool. But it's kind of like 
if you go to a college football game, the field is always a hundred yards long and this wide and the goal put everything's the same. And it's hard to do that in a lake. Um, so we've actually gotten away from those. Okay. That makes sense. That's all the questions we have. We have some people who are self-proclaimed title chasers. People love NAD. They think the website's phenomenal. So it's always good to have some positive reinforcement on these conversations for sure. Um, so, you know, there's different organizations. Do, do people, competitors, tend to focus on one or do they kind of dabble? How does that work from your perspective? I will say this in two ways. I will say it first, official is NAD and second is me. NAD doesn't care where people compete. We don't. The owner of our company competes with other organizations. You know, um, we I, I make the joke all the time that dock diving is like hamburgers. It's a hamburger is a piece of meat with two pieces of bread. Dock diving is a dog jumping off of a raised platform into a body of water. How you dress up your hamburger makes you McDonald's, Burger King or Wendy's. How you offer your sport makes you whatever organization. So our job at NAD is to offer the best product we can. But if you're like, hey, you know, and I'm this way out of the fast food places, I probably prefer McDonald's. But you know what? Sometimes I want Wendy's, you know, not Just really. Frost, Frosties, of, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like, you know, and, and, and that's a good point because I'm like, oh, I'm hungry for lunch, man. I want a Frosty. It's not that I want the Wendy's hamburger. It's something extra that they offer. So I'm going to buy their meal today. It's a perfect yeah. point. I'm not really a fan of Burger King, but hey, if I'm hungry and it's close, I'm going to go eat at Burger King. So and now are there people that are diehard Wendy's only. I only eat Chick-fil-A. I'll never eat anywhere. Else. Okay, that's fine. That's your choice. Totally. You can't then go into McDonald's and expect them to make you a Chick-fil-A sandwich. You know, <laughs> only. I mean, no. so we don't care as a company where people compete, you know, any of that. Um, as a competitor, I want people to go compete other places. I want them to see the differences, you know, because if you only do one organization, you know, there is a tendency to think this is this is the right way because this is all I've ever done. Right. Not there's varying ways. Um, there are pros and cons to every organization, including that. I'll totally. say that yeah. there are pros and cons. So it's what's it's what's important for you and your dog. Totally. And if you just want to, you know, you want to do it all and you can do it all, whatever is local or convenient for your schedule. It's like, I want my dog to jump. My dog loves this. I love this. I don't care. I'm that way with scent work. I'll do all the organizations because I enjoy the sport. Um, and, do I have preference? Some, sure. Yeah. And I don't know the scent work, but you know, there's different disciplines in the different companies. So some people are like, Hey, I'm going to go here and do this. But when I go here, I'm, and it's a well-rounded, if, if you and your dog are doing something together and having fun, that's kind of where it should stop. Exactly. Yep. And then, you know, it's nice to have variety because then you can pick and choose and say, this is what I really like, or this is what's in my area. Um, we did have another question here and it leads right in. So Jeanette is right on topic here. Um, what do you recommend starting a new dog? So let's say I have a seven pound toy fox terrier that my husband wants to do dog diving with, which is a true story, which is hilarious. Um, he jumped off the dock the first time this week. Um, onto a raft. <laughs> but, you know, how do people get started? And, you know, what do you recommend kind of to get started with a dog? So the number one thing I say with new people, which I, as I got more into the business side, I actually had gotten running the mobile docks and staying busy. I'd gotten away from working with new people and don't tell anybody this, but that's my favorite thing. I would rather help a new person do their first jump than to help somebody who I help them go from 27 feet to 28 feet. I mean, that's awesome, but it's that there's something about that first few jumps rush that you get, you know, yep. it's almost like a high that you then chase for the rest of your dog's, you know, history. Yep. So my number one thing is it needs to be something that is fun for both you and your dog. So a lot of people that talk about what do I need to do? A dog needs to have, and this is major, there's always the outlying differences, but right. a dog needs to have some type of toy drive and it needs to not be afraid of the water. Um, 
I have five dogs. Only three do dock diving. The other two, one has negative toy drive, which how it got <laughs> I don't know. And the other one has toy drive, but she doesn't care about the water. So I do agility and barn hunt and fast cat and frisbee with one of them. The other one literally does nothing. Um, That's okay if you have five. <laughs> but anyway, you know, it's so you they have to have that. And then you go somewhere and you find a facility or you go to a lake or a pond and you play with your dog. I don't care about sit stays. I don't care about how far they're jumping. You make the interaction between you and your dog of them going into water and getting something and bringing it back to you the best thing they've ever done. And you will be surprised. And, and guess what? It may take somebody else two visits to get to that point. It might take you a year. Oh, you got to be kidding me. It's raining here. We can't hear it. Um, no, I have like a whole, I was cleaning the attic. I have a whole bunch of stuff sitting outside. <laughs> oh, it's going to be super clean now. <laughs> if it gets any worse, I may have to cut this short. It wasn't supposed okay. to rain till like 10 o'clock tonight. <laughs> Like, no, there's like boxes of books and stuff sitting outside. Of course, because you left it outside. That's why it's going to rain. <laughs> so I'm keep an eye on it. it. <laughs> so anyway, that's how you get started is you you kind of introduce them that way. Find somebody that's been in the sport. Don't rush them. You know, just kind of get them going nice and slow. Let them progress at their pace. And is there any kind of groundwork you can do if you, you know, let's say you can't get to the pool very often or, you know, expenses, what what are some things you maybe can do at home? You know, in in playing fetch, um, you can work on, you know, a sit stay that some people need on the dock um, by, you know, put your dog in a sit stay two feet away from you, wait, go and throw the toy and then back them up and back them up, throw the toy and then release them, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And is it required that they, I've seen some dogs do a really nice sit stay, um, no, like Maddie and Dara do that, and other people have someone hold them? Um, other organizations have one person on the dock. Some of the other organizations allow two. So if your dog won't sit stay, you can hold them. Okay, gotcha. All right. We're going to have to speed this up. Okay, <laughs> we are going to speed it up. I don't see any other questions. There's one. Um, Carla. All right, let's show Carla's question. So is it true just because the dog loves jumping in the lake, um, he or she may not jump in a pool because the water looks very different? Um, There is some truth to that. No dogs are cookie cutters. So some dogs, when they, if they learn to jump in lakes, because usually the lake is darker. So when they go to jump in a pool and it's crystal clear, they're like, wait a minute. And I'll usually tell them, you know, hey, go play, go get in the pool with your dog, go play with your dog in the water till they build up their confidence. And then they're usually okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I've seen some, you know, look, there's been some that I've seen videos of them jumping in lakes and they never jump, you know, in a pool ever. (laughs) Most of them, like 95% of them, it just takes back up a little bit in your training okay, in the lake, your dog was running and jumping 20 feet. Just go play with them, kind of back up a little bit, you know, and they'll pick back up on it. Okay. And just kind of go at their pace, it sounds like. Yes. As long Don't as, as, long as they're not saying, I hate this, keep going. Yes. And I mean, one of the things we say, and there's a whole argument about this. I'm going to tell you my opinion. I don't think you should ever have to force a dog off a dock. I know some people that say, oh, I gave my dog one little push and then they jump from then on. Okay, that's your dog. I can't tell you what to do with your dog at your at our events. It's not allowed, you know. So, you know, I mean, if you got to make your dog do it, maybe your dog doesn't want to do it. Right. Totally. We have another question here from Aaron. Um, Is there something you should not do, which is perfectly what we were talking about when starting out? Like, do not force them to do the thing. Yeah. And, and don't rush, let them, you know, it's consider it like, you know, steps, go up a step, hang out there for a second, build their confidence, go to the next step, build their confidence, go to the next step, build their confidence. And Terry has a follow-up question about, you know, toy play, um, you know, so playing with toys in the water, retrieving, that's what we really want to do. 
Yeah. And, and all you're doing is build it's honestly dock diving is about their confidence to have fun. Yeah. And to be comfortable and know how to, how to navigate it. Right. Yeah. And do we need to be careful with, you know, there's a very specific way, like typically you jump off the dock and then you swim to the ramp. Um, are there certain safety things we need to keep in mind with that so that the dog knows exactly how to exit? Well, I always tell people, if you go to a new pool, let your dog go up and down the ramp once or twice, let them do it. You know, um, hang on one second. I'm going to see how bad this is over me right now. <laughs> I have a lot of stuff outside that if I get totally wet, my wife's going to kill me. <laughs> we can't have that. Yeah, we're going to have to. Okay. It's so, light now, but it's coming worse. All right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, you, you know, you take them down the ramp so they know how to get out. One of the other things is, and most facilities have it, if this is the dock, there'll be an extension piece that blocks the ramp. You do, if they don't, don't let your dog learn to jump from the dock to the ramp. They can get hurt. And oh, all I the never even thought about that. The DQ. If they do it, it doesn't count. So don't even let your start your dog start that bad habit. Okay. Never even thought about that because everyone I've ever seen has that little barrier yeah. there. Yeah. Okay, cool. And that's why it's there. It's a safety thing. Okay. Very good. All right. So because we are time sensitive due to weather, um, please ask any other questions. But is there anything else? I feel like we covered a ton in a really short amount of time. Um, is there anything that you are really hoping to share with people tonight about the sport and obviously the organization that you're really passionate about um, so that others can get involved? Well, I, I tell people, you know, go try it. It's a very accepting group um, wherever you go. Um, you know, people have fun. I mean, we all love to talk about our dogs. So people are going to help you and they're going to, you know, they should be showing you and giving you ideas. Um, don't be afraid that if you go to an event to ask somebody a question. Most events with any organization, people will come up and go, hey, how are you? Are you new? You know, that kind of thing. But um, there's a lot of information on our NAD website that you can read and, and get information. Um our social media page is super active. And if you message us, we absolutely, you know, will answer. Um, my wife makes the joke that she's going to come back in the next life as my phone because it gets more action than she does. Um, <laughs> I think that's true of a lot of our phones. You know, I know. She's like, you're on your phone more than you're around me. So because I'm, I, I don't like, you know, people ask questions. I want to answer it. Um, right. You know, we've got our season. We've, we're only like a month until our season's over. We end the end, the middle of October, and wow. then it's our nationals in Orlando. And this is our seventh year for our national championship. And I mean, we're going to have close to eight eight hundred and fifty dogs at our national championships for three days. Um, we're part of the AKC national championships down in Orlando, so we're that big and we're that much of the event. It's crazy. It's that just, it's awesome. It's so much fun. They have like 30 confirmation rings, three or four full size agility, a couple of obedience. They had fly ball last year. We have two docks there. We want three docks. They just won't give us enough room. So <laughs> it's just, wild. It's, well, so, and, and this and, is very fan friendly, right? So people can come. Oh watch. my gosh. Can yes. they, are there volunteer opportunities as well? Well, there's always volunteer. We always, so okay. we use a term that kind of got coined two years ago. So North America diving dogs, our initials are NAD. Somebody started using the term NADIC, like an addict. Oh, it, it, okay. Or NADICs, N-A-D-D-I. And it, it absolutely defines our competitors. And it's not just that they're 100% dedicated and crazy about doing stuff with their dog. They support our organization. They come to events. They help new people. They cheer people on. Um, they share amazing stories. They help each other out. We've had people with our organization that lost property in California for fires. Mm. People donated to it. I mean, it's so much all of that, that it is this culture. It is this group that are there to support each other and their dogs that it fits that we're natics. Okay. And you know, Anyone who does dock diving, I've watched it. Like, there isn't a breed limit. No. Like, any breed, 
you'll see any breed out there doing it. You'll see Corsos doing it. You'll see Papillons doing it. Like there's no limit. That's age, pretty size, amazing. Age, nothing matters. Well, they have to be at least six months old. But if your dog will go do it, you can come do it. That's awesome. Super cool. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up unless there's anything else you want to add. I, I, I could actually, have done it all day, but it's raining. As well. My wife called three <laughs> times. I know she's like, have you got everything in? It's raining. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let her see this video. <laughs> no, she doesn't so no. So if anybody's got any questions, you can go to our website. You can go to our Facebook page. If you private message our Facebook page, you're going to get me. Um, so, you know, we're happy to answer any questions. And like I say, I say this all the time. Get out there and do something with your dog. I'd love to see you at a NAD dock diving event. If you can't come to NAD, go jump somewhere. If you can't do dock diving, go do scent work, go do Frisbee, go try barn hunt, you know, go do something fun with your dog. Absolutely. Have fun with your dog. That's what it's all about. Well, thank you so much. When you have a moment, if you can post a link in the comments for us, Steve, okay. where to follow for the Facebook group, that would be amazing or page. And um, you guys keep the conversation going after because I know Steve will check in. He's all about those customers and making sure people are well cared for. That has been a constant for him. And uh, thanks again. I really appreciate you reaching out. Sorry, to I have to cut it short. Mother Nature's not cooperating. It's not. Not at all. It wouldn't be a dock diving event today. We need to <laughs> rain though, so I can't fuss. We do. We do. Well, thanks again. And uh, I'm going to close it out. So happy Friday, guys. Right. Natix out.